If you're a football fan that has watched football over the past year, you definitely know who this guy is. Patrick Mahomes. And if you happen to not know who this is and decided to take a break from football over the last year, I'll give you a little bit of an introduction. Patrick Mahomes was drafted with the 10th pick in the 2017 NFL Draft by the Kansas City Chiefs after they traded up to the spot to select him. The plan was to have him sit behind Alex Smith for a year and after doing so, the reins would be handed off to him to take over the Andy Reid offense. And last year was his first year doing so, but I don't think anyone expected him to perform the way he performed last year. I think it's incredible how a year ago, Patrick Mahomes didn't even start an NFL game, and one year later, he not only threw for over 5,000 yards and 50 touchdowns in his first year in the league, but on top of that, he got endorsements, he got the Madden 20 cover, Madden even included the ability to throw no-look passes for him. He might be the greatest player, video game player of all time already because he has this ability to throw 80-yard passes. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section. Um, if Patrick Mahomes wants to be the greatest video game character of all time, he has to beat out Tecmo Bowls, Bo Jackson, and Madden 2004's Michael Vick. Going into the draft, Patrick Mahomes was considered to be the third best quarterback in the draft class behind Mitchell Trubisky, who was being extremely hyped up by Mel Kuyper, and Deshaun Watson, who definitely had the resume to back up all the hype surrounding him. In fact, Dabo Sweeney called his quarterback the Michael Jordan of football, and after Deshaun Watson's rookie year, it kind of looked like he could be the Michael Jordan of football. As a matter of fact, after the 2017 season, I thought the best quarterback in the draft was definitely Deshaun Watson. But as time's progressing forward, it, se it seems more and more like the 2017 NFL Draft was an incredible draft for quarterbacks. A couple of things you need to bear in mind before we get into this is the fact that Patrick Mahomes was kind of reached on. He was definitely not expected to go into the top 10. As a matter of fact, as I was doing some research on some old mock drafts, I saw that the average draft position for Patrick Mahomes was around the 25th pick. But at the end of the day, it did work out. Now, let's start with the number one overall pick. The Cleveland Browns drafted Miles Garrett. And honestly, at the time, the Browns were, of course, the laughing stock of the league. They were the laughing stock of the league up until halfway this year when they actually seemed like a competitive football team and seemed to have finally made the right decision drafting Baker Mayfield. But back in 2017, they didn't want to take any more chances on a quarterback. And I can't really blame them. I personally wasn't really sold on Mitchell Trubisky. And I do feel like if he went to the wrong team and if he wasn't coached by a genius, offensive genius in Matt Nagy, he may have flopped under the Cleveland Browns front office. That front office is actually terrible, or was terrible at the time. So 2017 brought Miles Garrett. I believe 2017 was also John Dorsey's first year. And I guess he definitely did not want to miss on a surefire can't miss prospect, especially given the history of the Browns drafting terrible players. So, without a doubt, I don't think Cleveland really made a mistake with the number one overall pick. A lot of people always bring up the fact that they traded out of drafting Carson Wentz and they could have potentially drafted Deshaun Watson or Patrick Mahomes. They definitely could have used Patrick Mahomes, but I don't think the Browns were in that position to take a risk on a player like Patrick Mahomes. Because if you look at Mahomes' draft profile, he does look like your typical quarterback. You know, big arm, gr has the tools, a little bit reckless, kind of compares to Brett Favre coming out of college, obviously with a big, uh, bigger arm. And being the Browns, they just wanted to reduce their risk as much as possible. So I could 100% understand the Miles Garrett pick. Now, the Chicago Bears traded up from the number three spot to the number two spot. And at the time, 
a lot of people were making fun of them for this. They literally gave up, I think they gave up a couple of uh, third round picks to move up one spot. And I don't think the 49ers were really sold on Mitchell Trubisky as their quarterback, although John Lynch kind of made it seem so. So as a result, we had the Chicago Bears move up a pick to select Mitchell Trubisky. So clearly they could have used Patrick Mahomes. But at the time, Mitchell Trubisky was considered to be the most polished quarterback, the most ready uh, uh, ready quarterback. He had all the tools. He had the arm. He had the ability to scramble. He, had, he seemed to have the mental game down, the ability to learn a new offense potentially. He, was, he seemed very poised. And I really can't blame the Bears for selecting Trubisky. In fact, the Bears were so desperate to get their quarterback of the future at that point that they not only drafted Mitchell Trubisky, but they also went ahead and signed Mike Lennon to a terrible contract and he would flame out after a year. So I don't think it was the Bears picking Trubisky was the wrong pick. I think they were trying to be safe, especially considering the fact that they didn't, they haven't had a solid quarterback in a couple of years and their last solid quarterback was Jay Cutler and before that was Rex Grossman and Jay Cutler is great don't get me wrong but you know I don't think any Bears fans are gonna think man Jay Cutler he was one of the greatest quarterbacks in the history of our franchise so I can understand the Trubisky pick here the number three pick the San Francisco 49ers drafted Solomon Thomas now this is the first time I'm looking at a team and I'm thinking, dang, you really could have drafted Patrick Mahomes instead because the San Francisco 49ers have Kyle Shanahan as their head coach, who is known to be an offensive genius. Honestly, I'm a huge believer that if Shanahan gets any quarterback, he can make that quarterback into something special. He planned offenses around all kinds of players from Matt Ryan to currently Jimmy Garoppolo to even Johnny Manziel. So the fact that he could scheme around any quarterback makes me confident that any QB could su uh, succeed under an offensive genius such as him. So Solomon Thomas hasn't really amounted to much. In fact, the 49ers recently took another defensive end in the NFL draft, Nick Bosa. And it just seems that if they drafted Mahomes over here, just imagine Patrick Mahomes combined with Kyle Shanahan. I don't know if it'll get any better than it is currently. Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. But definitely the 49ers could have used him. Unfortunately, I guess the 49ers were trying to build up their defense before they wanted to build up their offense. Which is understandable. You definitely don't want to put a rookie quarterback under that type of pressure where he has to throw up and score like 40 points per game in order for his team to succeed. So I could definitely respect that decision. At the time, they were making moves such as signing Richard Sherman. The 49ers later on would go on to draft Reuben Foster, even though that didn't work out. So I understand why they would go the Solomon Thomas route, but... They definitely, definitely made a mistake pa passing on Patrick Mahomes here. With the fourth pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars at the time were still very, very faithful in Blake Bortles developing into a good quarterback. And they felt that they just needed to take a little pressure off of him. You have to understand the Jaguars defense looked very promising at the time and everyone thought that Leonard Fournette was the next coming of Adrian Peterson. He was the number one recruit coming out of high school. He looked very good in college. He had a very aggressive running style. And I honestly was kind of jealous at the, uh, at the pick at the time. I'm a Cowboys fan and I personally thought that Leonard Fournette was going to turn out to be way better than Ezekiel Elliott. Unfortunately, injuries, amongst other things, got in the way of his career. But do the ja could the Jaguars have used Patrick Mahomes? Of course they could have used Patrick Mahomes. But when you're already invested in a quarterback like Blake Bortles, which they selected with, I believe, the number three overall pick in the 2014 draft, and Blake Bortles was already known as a player that you were going to have to wait on to develop fully. 
I really cannot fault them with this pick. The logic is perfect. In fact, in fact, the Jaguars were probably trying to establish a run game so they could be heavily reliant on their defense and just have Blake Bortles manage games, which is definitely not what you want whenever you draft a quarterback in the top three, but I understand what they were trying to do here. So believe it or not, Patrick Mahomes would not fit into their plans. I really don't think a quarterback throwing 80-yard bombs or, you know, carving up defenses with his deep throws would also fit in with the team that wants to control the clock in order to have their defense make plays and carry them to wins. Unfortunately for the Jags, it worked for them in 2018, but it didn't really work for them last year. The fifth pick was the Tennessee Titans. They already spent their number two pick in the 2015 draft on Marcus Mariota. It would make no sense whatsoever to invest in Patrick Mahomes here. And I don't think it's worth giving up on Mariota yet because injuries really hampered his career and he definitely showed some promise. Unfortunately, currently, I do not think he's in a position to succeed. Mike Vrabel's a defensive coach. He does have weapons around him like Corey Davis, which is who they selected with the number five pick, who looks very solid, although not solid enough to justify a top five pick on. But at the end of the day, this video is about why the teams pass on Patrick Mahomes. And the answer for the Titans is simple. They already had their franchise QB of the future. The New York Jets definitely had a need at QB. And at the time, they thought Ryan Fitzpatrick was their QB, but he just came off of a terrible year. I suppose that they weren't really sold on much of the prospects, or they may have had a similar mentality to the 49ers where they want to build up their defense before drafting their QB of the future. So because of that, although they could have used him, I guess the Jets were thinking, let's take the best defensive prospect here. Safety, uh, ha drafting a high-level safety is very scarce in the NFL, and finding high-level safeties is very difficult. So when you get a prospect like Jamal Adams or even Malik Hooker later on, you definitely want to pounce on him. So although the Jets could have used Patrick Mahomes, I don't think it would have uh, it would have been the right call here especially considering the fact that they had nobody on the offensive end. They had absolutely no playmakers at the time. Their best player actually left, and that was Brandon Marshall earlier. So they were definitely hitting the restart button on the offense. And by selecting Jamal Adams, you not only kind of set yourself up to tank for the year after, but on top of that, you get Sam Darnold coming out next year. And I'm sure teams knew this at the time. They The 2018 NFL draft class was actually kind of hyped up, and there were people talking about it. You know, the idea of uh, Sam Darnold and Josh Allen and Josh Rosen coming out actually really excited some teams although Josh Rosen didn't really make his announcement later it just seemed like a way more promising QB class at the time so because of that I suppose the Je uh, the Jets were thinking let's take Jamal Adams here and draft a QB later the number seven pick belonged to the Los Angeles Chargers and I don't really think I have to spend much time on this because the Chargers were in a situation where they are trying to give Phillip Rivers as much weapons as they can in order to make a final push for the playoffs or the Super Bowl for him. So I suppose over here they wanted to get a red zone threat for him considering the fact that Antonio Gates is definitely not the player he once was and for that reason they decided to draft Mike Williams. Sure, technically you could draft Patrick Mahomes and have him uh, sit behind Phillip Rivers and learn a thing or two, but what would be the point in that? Phillip Rivers is playing great football, and you want to give him, you want to invest as much resources in him so you could bring a Super Bowl to Los Angeles. The Carolina Panthers had their QB of the future, and they just wanted to get as many weapons for Cam Newton as possible, and I think we could just leave it at that. The Cincinnati Bengals are an interesting team because when you talk to a Bengals fan, it sounds like they're very, very frustrated with the play of Andy Dalton. And it just seems very strange to me that they would reach on a quarterback, John Ross, just because of an incredible 40 time. There's been plenty of times in the past where we've seen players with crazy 40 times and John Ross was a player that pretty much rode that momentum into 
a top 10 draft pick. He was literally the player selected before Patrick Mahomes. And honestly, before last year, he didn't really do much. And last year, um, his best year so far, he had a 240-yard receiving season. And I think he caught like seven touchdowns once A.J. Green went down. But I don't know if John Ross is uh, John Ross's inefficient NFL production is a product of Marvin Lewis or a product of poor offensive play calling. I guess this year is the year we could see. But this video isn't about that. This video is about could the Bengals have used Patrick Mahomes, and of course they could have. Andy Dalton didn't seem doesn't seem like at least from a perspective of a Bengals fan, Andy Dalton doesn't seem like the guy that could get it done. But I guess whenever you have a quarterback that is not good enough to win you Super Bowls, but isn't bad enough to lose you games, at that point you might as well focus on other areas of the ball. However, I am very against drafting a wide receiver in the top 10 of the draft, so I do think this was a bit of a wasted pick. I, they definitely could have used Patrick Mahomes, but I'm sure Patrick Mahomes is thanking his lucky graces that he fell to number 10. Now, the 10th pick is where Patrick Mahomes went. The Kansas City Chiefs at the time were actually, this was considered to be a very surprising pick. You have to understand that the Chiefs traded up to the number 10 spot with the Buffalo Bills in order to draft Patrick Mahomes. And he was considered to be a second round pick. So many people were very surprised that the Kansas City Chiefs were willing to trade up to the number 10 spot to select a player that was considered to be a reach at the time just to sit in behind Alex Smith. And of course it worked out, of course, but it just goes to show you that most of the rankings, Mel Kuyper and Todd McShay and all these other uh, NFL draft analysts put on players are absolutely meaningless. It means absolutely nothing because Andy Reid literally made this pick. This was an Al Davis-esque type pick. Andy Reid made this pick because Patrick Mahomes passes were clocked in at 60 miles per hour. I think I, I think that combined with the fact that he is an offensive genius Result, uh, resulted in the confidence that, hey, if I get this guy with a booming arm, I could draw up some crazy plays for him, and we could take over the NFL by storm. And that is exactly what happened. Let me know what you guys think. Is there a point that I left out? Do you think any of those first nine teams that I said couldn't use Patrick Mahomes could? If so, let me know in the comment section. Are there any other players that you would like to see this type of video be done on? If you do, let me know in the comments who I should cover next.